Welcome to Grade 8, Chapter 2, Integers. We're going to start with a review. Um, in Grade 7, you added and subtracted integers. But in Grade 8, you're not supposed to be taught how to do it. You're supposed to remember. And in my experience, you all need a little bit of a refresher. So our first bit is going to be on modeling, and we're going to do a little bit of adding and stuff just to help you out, okay? So in Unit 1.7 last year, we learned that a 1 could be represented by a small tile, which is a block, okay? Now, we need to change the tile system so we can put positive and negatives now. Before, we just did 1s, and we did all your algebra, which is positive numbers and stuff like that. So we're going to change it around. So now, the positive one will be clear, and the negative one will be filled in, okay? So to take and actually show... Then this, this one here, positive one, is this one, it's yellow. Now, the red one, I can't do red here, okay? Um, I can actually do black, because that's what you will be doing, shading things in. So, think of the black one as a red tile, like when we did before. And think of the clear one as a ye yellow tile. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. I want you to remember how to represent the following integers using the tiles. So, take a second and do that. All right, it should be done. So positive 2 is 1, 2. I'm going to go down to here. Positive 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. The negative 3 is 1, 2, 3. The negative 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, we can change some of this. We don't have to use positive 2 as only two positives. I can add a negative and a positive to this one. And you'll notice that these two things right here form a zero, don't they? So when you do your canceling, you'll realize that that is actually still positive two. All right, turn your page. All right, so this is just again, review what we had. When you have a positive and a negative together, you get zero. And this is called the zero principle. All right. It works when you have one of each. And you take a look here. I've got a positive and a negative here. So that forms a zero right here. The second line is a positive and negative. And that's a zero. Now, if you want to, you can just do this. Here is positive and positive, negative and negative. These ones give you a zero, and you should remember that from last year when we were doing canceling. So you can just group them as many as you need to in order to cancel them out. Since both give a sum of zero, each pair of opposite integers creates a zero. The zero principle states that when you have equal numbers of opposite integers, they sum to be zero. So now, let's see if you can use the zero principle to show me the value of negative two. So draw it in two different ways. Show me negative two in two different ways and include the zero principle. All right, pretty straightforward. First off, I'm gonna start with negative two there and negative two there. Now, in order to make um, this stay negative two, if I add simply another negative, now I have negative three. So to make it go away, I've gotta add a positive. If I add another negative, in order to make that one go away, I have to add a positive to match that one. So if you take a look at that example, the stuff on the left, stuff on the right, sorry, that's actually a zero, leaving you with negative two. Now, how many ways can this be done? Well, I can add zeros until I, fa I, I, I fill books and pages. So it'll never stop. I can add, you know, thousands of them. But as long as it's a pair of zeros together, I do it doesn't matter how I'm going to do this, all right? So it's actually infinitely possible. I can just do this. As long as I add pairs and they stay pairs, I can do this. Now, I'm going to caution you. Don't try to do this on an assignment because I don't want someone to have to sit there and count all the negatives and all the positives and make sure that you didn't forget one, okay? But what happens here is all of this if done correctly, goes to zero, and that leaves you still with negative two. All right, turn the page. Um, another way, I'll skip that. We can, you can do another way if you want. 
So far, we have learned to represent integers using tiles, and the two integers of opposite signs will create zero. So now it's time to add integers using the tiles. This is actually fairly simple. All we're going to do is draw the first integer, then draw the second integer, then cancel out what's there that will go together, make the zeros, and then finally, what's left over is your answer. All right? So I'm going to kind of figure that, put this together here. We've got positive 2 plus positive 1. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw positive 2 right here. Not a problem. There's my positive 2. And I'm going to draw positive 1 right there. Okay? Now this says that I'm supposed to add them together. So thinking of that, when I put them all together, I now have three of them, don't I? Now there's no blacks and so there's no positive and negatives here, so nothing cancels. So that means that my final answer is going to be positive 3. Okay, how am I going to mark this? Well, you're going to have to write the question down, and then I'm going to be looking, does this match up with this? Does this match up with this? If there's any cancelling to do, I'll mark that. And finally, whatever's left over. So in this case, you would get one for drawing this one, one for drawing that one, and one for combining them because there's no way for them to cancel. So that, work, that mark is three. Now, when they're both negative, nothing changes really. I've got negative 2, and the first thing I've got to do is draw the negative 2. Then I've got to draw the negative 3, right? And when I put them all together, um, I'll just grab it and I'll slide them to the, to the right here, okay? So I've got here's my 2, and here's my 3. So when I put these all together, I now have 5, all right? So what I'm looking for is, can you draw this? Can you draw this? Okay, and can you tell me it's negative 5? Okay, now it doesn't cancel. So if you take a look at these two questions, the first one were all positive, the second ones were all negatives. That means that when you add integers that have the same sign, you count the number of tiles. That's all you have to do. That's adding integers, that's half of it. Adding the positive integer to a positive integer, adding a negative integer to a negative integer. Now, the only other way it would happen or that you can do this is if you have a negative and a positive combined. So how do we do this? Well, this may, I'm going to do a bunch of these and then I'm going to show you the way I want you to do it on your page, okay? So the first thing is negative 2. Can you draw a negative 2? If you can do that, good. Can you draw negative 3? Okay? Now, what I would like you to do is write the question down, and I'm going to actually, you don't have to actually put this in here. This is the way I want you to do it here. Take a look at negative 2 and positive 3. Draw them below. Now, circle what goes away and put a 0 there. Tells me those four integers give me 0. That leaves me with positive 1. Okay? So, um, over here, you could use, what I was doing here is I was having this here and this here and this here, and this here, showing this becomes a zero, this becomes a zero, and there's a positive one left over. So you can see how that parallels it. But for what I'm going to be doing for you, for your marking is, can you draw a negative two? Can you draw a positive three? Can you cancel? Can you tell me what's left? So you'll see here, because we have a canceling, it's actually four marks. Okay, so let's take a look at the bottom one here. I'm going to take and ignore this part here for now, okay? Just ignore it. We'll, uh, We'll do this stuff later. Uh, okay, so just ignore that part. All right, so here we go. Can you draw a negative 4? If you can draw a negative 4, you get yourself a mark. Can you draw a positive 2? If you can do that, you get yourself a mark. Can you tell me the positive 4, sorry, the positive 2 and the negative 2 cancel and become 0? That's telling me 0 principle, so put that in. And finally, the final answer, negative 2. So, how do I mark this? Did you draw negative 4, positive 2? Did you draw, I'm sorry, did you draw negative 4? Did you draw positive 2? Did you cancel? And did you find out what's left over? This here must be written down. Sometimes I give a mark for it, sometimes I don't. But in a question, in a math class, you always write down the question. Okay. Now, this brings us to subtracting integers. To subtract integers using tiles, you use the zero principle by what is called adding the opposite. Now, 
to see why this works, let's look at one of the example. Considering the following question, negative 3, take away negative 5. If we look at the tiles, I've got negative 3. Here we are. 1, 2, 3. Now, it's a subtract question. So somehow, I've got to take five tiles, which are negative, away. But if you notice there, I only have three. So how can you take away five of them when you only have three? Well, the way to get around that is to think back to the zero principle. The zero principle means that if you put down some zeros, so we add a negative here and a negative here, and another positive and a positive. You see now, I still have over on the left-hand side here, this is still negative 3, isn't it? Because these are zeros. They're not going to do anything to change negative 3. But now, because I have got five of them, I can now take, and I can take my five tiles away. Notice they don't go to zero. They just go away. All right? Now, what does that leave me? All right. By adding zero, I now have um, two more positive tiles. Oh, sorry. By adding zero, I forgot what my notes said. I better go on. Just a second. I got to do a quick check here to make sure everything's working. Give me a moment. Okay. So I took a look at my notes. It's kind of simple. But by adding zero twice, I now have got enough or got two more negative tiles. So now that I have two more negative tiles, I can subtract the five. Okay? So taking away the five means that this is what's left, isn't it? So the answer is negative two. Okay, so you can just I'm gonna go back here and just go down here and put the answer down here. So your answer is equal to negative two. You can disregard this for now. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go and review quickly. I need to take and get the question is negative 3, take away negative 5. Now these are three negative tiles, and these are five negative tiles here, so I've got to take five negative tiles away, but I only have three. In order to make that work, I add zeros until I get enough negatives. Once I have enough negatives, they will be subtracted and everything's gone away. That's beautiful. Whatever's left is my answer. All right, let's take a look at another question, okay? Um, actually, let's go look at the, the shorter way. You should have noticed that this was the question we did. Negative 3, take away negative 5, is equal to positive 2. That's what we just proved there in the last question, when we just did it. But we did it by adding zeros. At the beginning of the lesson, I told you about subtraction being adding the opposite. So what I want to do is I want to look at this and say, okay, let's change and add the opposite, okay? So if you take a look here, this is what we're starting with, and if we add the opposite, the question now becomes negative three plus positive five. Now remember, this used to be, used to be negative five. Now you're asking me, well, why do I change it? Well, the reason you're changing it is we are going to prove that if you just add the opposite every single time, the question is always going to have the, same, the correct answer. Take a look at what happens here. Negative 3, can you draw it? Check. Can you draw a positive 5? Check. Can you cancel? Check. Answer, negative 2. But that's addition. Adding integers is easier than subtracting them. But you have to remember to add the opposite. So in a question like this, you're going to get the question negative 3 minus negative 5. The first thing you're going to do is go negative 3 plus positive 5. Don't change the first one. All right. Now, once you have that, you draw the 3 and you draw the 5. These go away. Answer, positive that is a lot easier than sticking a whole bunch of zeros in. Okay, it's the same answer. Let's try another one here. Okay, so what am I expect you to do? You have a subtraction question. When you subtract integers, remember this, only when you subtract 
do you change? Okay? Adding the opposite means negative 4 plus negative 3. This one here changes to its opposite. This becomes add. So we end up with plus add the opposite integer. The opposite integer of positive 3 is negative 3. So now we've got the question changed into an addition question, which makes it easy. Negative 4. Let's grab your negative tiles. And then grab your positive tiles. Oh, sorry. Grab the negative tiles. One, two, three. And now, is there anything to cancel? No. So your answer is negative seven. Okay. So that gives us a total of negative seven tiles. All right. Next question. Do you try this? See how it works, and then I'll do it for you. All right. First thing you do, add the opposite. Negative 4 plus positive 5. Add the opposite. This changes to plus. This changes to its opposite integer. Negative 4 plus positive 5. So, adding them. I'm just going to recopy this. Normally, you wouldn't do it this way. Okay? I need negative 4. So, grabbing my negative 4 tiles, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Grabbing my positive 5 tiles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what cancels? Well, you'll notice that here, four positives and four negatives become zero. Your answer, positive one. Okay? Add the opposite. Draw negative four. Draw positive five. Zero principal. What's left? You see, five marks. Okay, moving on. Okay, positive one. Here's another one. Give this one a try. All right. Adding the opposite. The first one never changes. The positive add the negative 6. See that the positive add the opposite. That's what I'm doing there. Okay. Now, can you draw it? Positive 4. Here's my positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's my negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's what cancels. And my answer, negative 2. So how does this work out for marks? Did you draw a positive 4? Did you draw a negative 6? Did you cancel correctly? Did you tell me negative 2 is left? And did you add the opposite? There you go. There's your five marks. Okay, um, this one here is actually a subtract, add and subtract review question file. Um, I'm not going to, I obviously can't have you do it here and I'm not going to do it for you, but you can see this is the assignment that I would have given to you right after you started this. So you can draw these tiles and review it as you go. This one is drawing tiles. This one here would be five negatives here. This would be eight positives, three positives. This one here, you'd have to do some sort of a combination of a positive and a negative. Again, this would be a negative, and this would be seven negatives. Okay, and then here, suppose you have eight red tiles. How many yellow tiles would you need to model positive three? So very quickly to do this one, you have eight red tiles. One, two, three, oops, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to get positive three, which means that I'm done. I gotta have three left over. So I gotta make all these disappear. All right, so how many do I have there? If we take a look, I've got uh, 11 positives there, okay, because these ones here will all go to zero, okay? So you could go through these and do the assignments. If you have any questions, you come and talk to me, and I will, uh, I could help you. But you can see a lot of questions here that you have to draw the tiles out um, to make sure you understand this, okay? Okay. Now that the review is over, we now approach our topic of multiplication. So, what I just did, you should have remembered from grade 7. Okay? We can think of multiplication and division as two different things. Multiplication is rapid addition. We can think of division as rapid subtraction. Remember that each tile is a positive one or a negative one. So to complete multiplication of integers, we will use the idea of a bank, which we add integers into 
or take out <clears throat> in order to find the answer. Our bank is basically a large box, as I've shown you here. There's your bank. It's what we're going to work inside. Okay? Now, there's some things you have to understand. First off is that if you see a positive, okay, it means put in. If it starts with a negative, it means take out. Okay? Now, the number that you get here, if it's positive four, this means four groups. Okay? And then it gives you the next one, four groups of positive three. The negative would be take out four groups of five, whatever answer they've given you. So you have to remember that this positive right here is important. Okay? And this is important, and this is important. Oops, got that backwards. So this is put in groups of four, four groups of positive three. So how do you put in four groups of positive three? Grab your positive. I want to put in four groups of positive three. Okay. Four groups of positive three are now there. The total in the bank at the end is, well, you get positive 12. So the product of four and three is positive 12. Okay. Now, let's do another example. I've got four positive four times positive two. And again, remember, this positive here means put in. Okay? This number here means, I did it backwards again, four groups. Okay? Okay? And so it means put in four groups of positive 2. This is the groups that you're going to have here. So put in four groups of positive 2. So, okay, I'm going to grab my calculator thing here. We're still working with 2s. So put in four groups of positive 2. So there's one group, two groups, three groups, four groups. So I put in four groups of positive 2, which gives us a total of eight tiles, which are all positive. So I get positive 8. So therefore, we know that positive 4 times negative t times positive 2 is actually positive 8. So add four groups of positive 2 to the bank. All right, let's go to the next question. What did you notice about the results of positive integers times positive integers? Here's the first answer. Here's the second answer. What do you notice about positive 12 and positive 8? You should notice they are both positive. Okay? So, let's try multiplying a positive number by a negative number and see how that works, okay? <laughs> this means plus positive, which means put in, right? These are our three, three things you have to know about. Uh, it's not working very well. There we go. So this means put in. And this means groups, three groups of negative four. This is what your group is. Negative four. So I need three groups of negative four. Well, let's put that in there. Three groups of negative four. Okay, so here is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, oh, sorry, it's four. There's three groups of negative four, all right? Well, what does that give us? Well, take a look and count them up. It gives us a total of 12 negative tiles, which is negative 12, isn't it? So we know that negative, sorry, positive three times negative four is negative 12. Now, you should see something there. This was a positive times a negative, and the answer came out to be a negative. When it was a positive times a positive, it was a positive answer. When it was a positive times a negative, sorry, po a negative times a negative, we'll get to that one in a moment, okay? Okay, positive 4 times negative 2. Let's try this one. Again, positive means put in four groups of 
negative 2. Okay, so again, positive means put in four groups of negative 2. The group is negative 2. Okay, so put in four groups of negative 2. So let's do this. Four groups of negative 2. One group, two groups, three groups, four groups. So this product totals negative 8. Okay? Oh, I guess it's negative 8. So it's 8 tiles, 8 negative tiles, which is negative 8. All right? Again, look at that. A negative an answer. Go to the next question. Try this one yourself. Positive 3 times negative 6. All right, here we go. Put in three groups of negative 6. So let's do that. Put in three groups of negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, three groups of negative 6. So, three groups of negative 6 gives us a total of 18 negative tiles, which is negative 18. Notice it's negative. What do you notice about, about multiplying a negative times a positive? Well, a negative times a positive, we found out that a negative times a positive always equals a negative. Now, we're going to get to that in a minute. Now, the next one, we're going to have to do a little bit of um, going back to grade 4. In grade 4, you were taught that what's called the commutative property of multiplication. Now, I know you don't remember it. But what it meant was that any numbers you multiply, you're going to get a product. And as long as you're multiplying, you can switch their order, and it won't matter. So three, sorry, 2 times 3, right here, and 3 times 2, both equal 6, don't they? So it doesn't matter what order is. Okay. Now, the reason I want to show you that is, if you try to take out something that's not there, remember we did this before, you have to add zeros. It's always easier to put in than it is to take out. So we can rearrange questions to answer this by just changing things around. All right? This leaves us with the last possibility, which is a negative number multiplied by a negative number. For negative integers, instead of adding to the bank, you have to remove from the bank. Okay? Um, we're going to get to the last part just a minute. This is what I was talking about up here commutative property. We're going to get to that in a moment. Okay? Actually, I'll back up and do this right now. We did a negative times a positive, right? Um, we figured out that... Okay, this is back backwards, so it's okay. So negative times a positive is negative. We know that a positive times a negative is also negative. Now, how do I know that? That's where the commutative property comes in. Okay? I can switch them around. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we have done positive times positive, positive times negative, negative times positive. Now the last one, negative times a negative. Now, same thing happens here. Negative 4. Negative 4 means to take out four groups of negative 3. Now remember, the bank has nothing in it to begin with. It's empty, right? So if it's empty, it's got nothing, which is zero in it. So I'm going to fill it with zeros. Now how many zeros do I put in there? Well, I've got to have enough zeros so that I can take out four groups of negative three. Okay? Now taking a look at this, if I take away... Oh, what did I just do there? Sometimes my smart board is kind of weird. Okay. Go down here, four, take out four groups. Okay. So take out four groups of negative three. Here's a negative three. Here's a negative three. Here's a negative three. Here's a negative three. Count the groups. How many do I have? Four. Now, if I take them all out, What will be left? Well, it'll look like this. So, 
negative 4 times negative 3 equals positive 12. Now, I think you should start to be understanding or start to get the fact that we're trying to get away from drawing tiles because they have some problems. But let's try another one just to see if we, so you can understand what's happening here. Let's try another question. What is the product of negative 2 times negative 4? Now remember, negative means take out two groups of negative 4. Well, if I'm going to take out two groups of negative 4, I need to remove, right? This is here. Since two, negative 2 is removing, we need to remove two groups, remove uh, negative tiles. So I need to remove two groups of negative 4. So I need to put enough zeros in there to get out the negative 4. So I don't have them in here, so I can, I guess I have to add them in myself. So here is my first negative. And here is the positive. So there's a 0. So I need to make another group of this. Okay, so there's one group. Sorry, not quite yet. Okay, you see one group of negative 4 there, right? Now I have to take out two of these. So I'm going to grab my next group. Now, I've put enough zeros in there. Remember that this is a zero here. Okay. I put enough zeros in there that I now have two groups of negative 4, which can be removed. So if the negative 4 is done, I need now, after it's removed, this is what's going to be left. The 8s are gone. So the, the eight negatives are gone. That means my answer is positive eight. Okay. So what do you think the result of a negative by a negative will always be? Well, if you check the last two examples, you would have seen that a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. All right. You will have to master all four. You're going to have to show me a positive times a positive, a positive times a negative, a negative times a positive, and a negative times a negative. You're going to have to be able to draw those for me on assignments and on quizzes. So to summarize what we've done, see if you can fill these four in for me. Okay, this one is positive. This one is negative. This one's negative, this one's positive. So, there's two rules that we have to know. What is the product when the signs are the same? Those are the two that are the same, right? So what's your answer? Positive. So when the signs are the same, the product is positive. What happens when the signs are different? Well, take a look here. The answer is negative. So, you have to look at these and be able to tell me the answer. This one here is positive, so you'd be putting in some groups of something. This is putting in some groups of negative something. This is taking out some positives, and this is taking out some negatives. Okay? It doesn't matter. And these two here, we can use the commutative property. Whenever you get a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive, you can change that one into that one by just switching it around, so you really only need to know how to put in groups. So this is putting in, putting in, putting in. This is the only one where you're going to take out and use zeros. Okay, so go over everything again, review it, watch it, and try your assignment, and we will see you in the next lesson.